All righty. Thank you for your patience and for participating in the poll. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll now and just look quickly at some of our responses. Looks like we've got a lot of interest in process maps and flow charting. You are in the right place. You'll definitely go through some tips and tricks for that today. Also some interest in technical diagrams. Um, we'll cover some automation today. And then it looks like we have a lot of interest in tips and tricks. So I will be sure to get us started right off the bat with some of those, pepper them throughout the whole session. And then also diagramming best practices and multi-layered diagrams. Um, good to know. I will definitely make those a focus and I appreciate you um, letting me know what you wanna learn today. All right. Now, by way of introduction, my name is Paige Allen. I am a product pro here at LucidChart. Um, so what that means is, is I've spent um, thousands of hours in LucidChart um, building and creating. And so I have learned a tip or two in my time, and I am very excited to share those with you guys today. Now, you'll notice we are using Zoom for our software tool today for the webinar. What that means is, is you can hear me but I cannot hear you, and that is by design. So as we go through today's session, if you have questions, please use the Q&A to ask those. Um, sometimes they get lost in the chat thread. So if you have questions, please use the Q&A to ask those, and I'll be sure to answer them um, periodically throughout the session, and then we'll also save some time at the end. Um, the chat is a great place to use for conversation, sharing thoughts and ideas, and I will ask several questions um, and hope to have as much participation as possible in the chat. So when we use the chat today, I would like you to turn it to all panelists and attendees so that way everybody can see your responses. So let's go ahead and give that a try. If everybody will jump into the chat quickly, make sure it's turned to all panelists and attendees, and then let us know where you are joining us from. Wonderful. Looks like we've got folks from all over. Got some folks from Texas, New York, Boise. Perfect. It looks like a couple of you still have it turned to all panelists. So just double check that it says all panelists and attendees when you're sending those messages. All right, last order of business to talk about before we get started today is that there, there will be a recording sent out after the webinar. You should see that in the next 48 hours sent to your email you registered with. So please keep an eye out for that. You're more than welcome to rewatch it in your own time at your own pace if we move through things too quickly, or if you'd like to share it with a teammate, that's wonderful as well. We definitely encourage um, sharing your recording. All right, now let's talk about what we will be focusing on today. One of the really cool and exciting and challenging parts of my jobs is that LucidChart is a very broad tool, meaning we have folks with us today that are um, in IT and finance and HR and sales and all across the board doing very, very different things. And so um, finding something that is really relevant to everybody can be quite challenging. And what we have found is there are three very common business challenges that regardless of what it is you do will be relevant to you. So we're going to talk about those today, solve those business challenges using advanced features in LucidChart, and then we will reserve time again for that Q&A at the end. So to just quickly go over what those challenges are, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can standardize processes and clarify complex ideas. We live in a time of innovation and where businesses become increasingly more complex. And so being able to really add clarity to what it is you're trying to do and standardize that so everybody is doing um, the most efficient thing is very important. So we're going to talk about how custom shapes and templates can really help you accomplish this in LucidChart. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about improving communication and centralizing tribal knowledge. As you're working cross-departmentally, perhaps you have folks that are in remote locations or different offices, um, being able to communicate really easily is very, very important. And also having a central location for all of your important information um, will make or break a business. So we're gonna talk about interactive diagrams, how you can create presentations directly in LucidChart and some advanced styling tips um, as well. And last but not least, believe it or not, but Lucid actually does use Lucid Chart. Now we're going to talk about how you can efficiently create automated and dynamic diagrams. I saw a lot of you are creating technical diagrams, so we'll talk about how we can do that in Lucid Chart, how you can do things like importing data, creating layered diagrams, tips and tricks, and more. 
That said, we had a lot of interest in tips and tricks. So I'm going to get started right off the bat sharing five of my favorite lucid chart tips with you guys today. Now I'm going to make a commitment to you that you will leave today's session knowing five new things. So I will do a pulse check every so often, double check, make sure you learn five new things. And if you don't know five by the end, I will stick around until you do my commitment to you. All right. My first tip that I want to share with you today is in regards to lines. Now, there are multiple types of lines in Lucid Chart. We have what are called smart lines and precise lines. Now, when you start building things out, what you might notice is, especially if you have technical diagrams or things that are changing often, you start to get lines that look really skiwampus like this, right? As you start moving things around, um, they kind of get crazy, and then you feel like you need to delete them and redraw them, and it can be quite a tedious process. Now, Lucid Chart wants to do that heavy lifting for you. So if you draw your line just beyond the border of your second shape, you will see it highlights blue. As soon as it highlights blue, you'll just go ahead and release your mouse. And Lucid Chart is going to find the most efficient pathway to that second shape. So you'll see here um, that that line is going to be much shorter, much more direct and efficient than this crazy ski wampus line that we have to delete. The other type of line is just what it sounds like, a precise line that's going to allow you to point somewhere precisely on a shape. So you'll notice if you hold down your mouse, you can drag lines anywhere you'd like. You can have multiple lines that go into the same endpoint. Um, you can do whatever you'd like there. In fact, if you're building a server rack diagram or a wireframe or mock-up, maybe you have a screenshot in Lucid Chart, you can even drag, drag, drag your lines across the border of your shape and point to something specifically. So really pretty cool there um, for pointing to things precisely. All right, now that is my first tip for you. My second tip is going to be a navigation tip. Now, for those of you that are using the nav bars on the bottom or the far right of your screen, please don't do that anymore. Um, what you can do instead is hold down your space bar and click and drag to move around the canvas or use your scroll to zoom in and out. Again, remembering just to hold down that space bar. The, now, if you're using a trackpad, very easy, just like your cell phone, you're going to go ahead and use two fingers and you can navigate around the canvas very easily, spread them to zoom in, bring them together to zoom out. Which brings me to our third tip today, and that is going to be locking things to your canvas. Now, where you would use this is if you want to lock perhaps a title down or a legend, or maybe you have a swim lane that you don't want to be accidentally moving all the time, right? Very frustrating if I'm accidentally clicking on things and moving them around. What we can do is select what you want to lock down. You'll navigate to the upper right of your editor, click this lock icon here, and you'll notice several options. Now we can lock things specifically and break it down by content or size or style, or we can click this toggle and just lock everything down. And now you'll notice um, when I try and interact with it, it's going to be locked and let me know that I cannot move this content and make my life a lot easier. All right. My fourth tip for you guys is going to be how you can quickly and easily replicate shapes. Now, this is very, very important if you have a lot of formatting applied and you want to just build out your diagram super quickly. Now, you'll notice when I've created these shapes, I didn't actually drag them from the flowchart shape library. What I did instead is select a shape, hold down the alt or the option button. So again, select the shape, hold down the other option button, click and drag, and I can create replicas of my shapes and build out my flowchart really, really quickly. In addition, I can actually select several of them at a time, hold down that alter option button and create replicas of groups of shapes, no problem. All right, which brings me to my very last tip and trick for you guys today. Um, in this section, at least, we'll have plenty more throughout the training. Um, and that is going to be how we can um, quickly and easily align and size shapes to look really nice. Now, as you're starting to build things out, let's say um, your lines get a little jaggedy. Maybe you're changing the dimensions of your shapes to fit text. Um, and we decide we want everything to be uniform. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is whatever you select last, everything will mass match to. So step one is my favorite. I want everything to look like step one. I will select step one last. I'm going to go ahead and select step three, two, select step one, very last, right click. And then this little menu here is going to allow me to make adjustments. I can change the size of things. I can align them. I can arrange them. Um, my second tip here is to remember to always match the size first. 
Um, if you align things and then match the size, it will mess up the alignment and you'll repeat steps. So we'll match our size. Both are width and height here. And then we can go ahead and align them. Um, so that way they look really nice. They're lined up and our diagram is ready to go. So the two things to remember there are select the one you want to match to last and always match size first. All right, now I want you all to drop in the chat and let me know um, if how many new things you've learned from our quick little tips and tricks there. Um, did you learn five? Did you learn one? Let me know um, how many new things you guys learned today. All right, we got some fives. That's great. A lot of you are in the three range. So, so we're not stopping yet, <laughs> but that's awesome. Looks like we're doing pretty good so far. All right, I'm gonna stop for questions really quickly. Looks like I have a couple stacking up and then we will move into our first business challenge. All right, looks like we're doing okay. Let's go ahead and jump into our first business challenge. All right, now for those of you that are familiar with Okta, that is great. If you are not, essentially what Okta is, is an authentication solution, meaning it allows you to log into multiple applications from one place. Now, if you're highly technical or you're working with solutions like this often, um, it could still be very challenging to you, but, but just in general, working with authentication solutions can be pretty complex. And so what Okta found was their sales engineers were having two challenges. The first challenge is they were explaining their solution to customers and people were having a hard time understanding exactly what it was, how it works, and how it's different from other providers. And the other problem that they had was they had a bunch of sales engineers that were creating different types of diagrams to try and close deals better. So they were spending a lot of time reinventing the wheel and creating different things. So Okta said, what's important to us is we need to standardize this so that everybody's doing the same thing. And we need to make sure that if everybody's doing the same thing, that it is the right thing. And it's very clear and easy for our customers to understand. So let's look at how they did that in Lucidchart. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you come into this document that they created, and they've actually allowed us to share this with you, this is one of their diagrams. So the first thing you'll notice is they have a lot of different shapes that are not native to Lucidchart. They've actually created these shapes. So we've got different, um, like process shapes that are put together that resemble a firewall. You'll see that we can break these apart and they're just regular rectangles. We've got cloud shapes, we've got logos, we've got icons, we've got um, images, we've got tons of different things here. So how can we create custom shapes in Lucidchart? Very easy. All you're gonna do is navigate to the shapes menu on the left-hand side and click this cogwheel here. And this will open our shape manager. Now this is going to allow us to um, create our own custom shape library. So at the bottom of our shape manager, you will see an add library section where we can click this plus icon and create a library of our own. We'll go ahead and title that. And um, a couple of things to point out here. If you were working with Visio previously, maybe you've got stencil files or custom shapes that you really enjoy using, you can upload them here and continue to use them in Lucidchart, no problem. You'll also notice this share toggle in the top right corner. You can actually create this for your entire team and share it so that everybody is using the same legends, icons, logos, whatever it might be to promote that standardization. We'll go ahead and close out. And now you'll notice that that shape library is going to appear in our toolbox on the left. Now we can of course drag and drop to rearrange that wherever we'd like that to be. And we can start adding shapes to our shape library. All we'll do is select the shape we want to add, simply drag and drop, and we can add that to our shape library, no problem. We can also add things like icons, we can add things like logos, images, we can add multiple shapes as a group. In fact, this CS Team fold folders library here is one that we've actually created. So I can quickly and easily find my photo, drag it onto Lucidchart, use it. I could save this as a custom shape and continue to use that um, in the future if I needed to. So lots of options with custom shapes. In fact, if you create a dynamic shape, you can actually save it there. So let's say you've got a Word doc that is connected. When you pull that back out, it will still be connected to that Word doc. Pretty cool. 
All right, now the other option you have for saving things as a custom shape is to select the shape, simply right click and add it to the custom shape library here. Now the benefit of doing it this way is you're able to title your custom shape right here, no problem, um, and go ahead and click done. And that's gonna be nice for your team if they are ever searching for that, and maybe they don't know where that library is or what it's called, it can really help just align them better to find that shape library. Now, if you save your shapes the other way, you can still rename them by coming back to the cogwheel, opening your custom shape library. We'll go ahead and open it here. Um, let's see. All right, there we go. You can go ahead and open any custom shape library you're working on and then simply right click and rename a shape. So very easy to rename it that way as well. Um, might be a more streamlined process to just right click to save. All right, and something else I wanna point out while we're here is this firewall is several process shapes together. Now I can select all of them and save them as a custom shape and they will behave as that individual group shape here. At any point I can go ahead and right click and ungroup that so they're back to behaving as individual shapes, um, no problem as well. All right, now once Okta did this, they decided, all right, we've got the clarity here. We now wanna create this as a template so that all of our sales engineers are starting from the same place when they're working with our customers. So how do we go ahead and do that? The first step is to clean it up and make sure your editor is ready to go and all set to be a template. So doing things like um, making sure you've got the branding on the canvas you'd like, the colors, um, logos, titles, all of that here is very important. Now, keeping in mind when you create a template, any settings you have will apply and persist in the template. So that means any custom shape libraries or libraries you have here in the toolbox will be there when you open your template, as well as any settings you've applied to the properties bar. So colors, fonts, styles, those will all be in your template as well. Um, so really you're setting the starting view of your document. Um, so perhaps if there's a certain color you want all of your shapes to be every time you come into lucid chart feel free to set that as a template um, easy way to get started now to create the template we're going to jump back into our documents page and we'll go ahead and find a document um, i'll just use this one for example today we'll navigate to the more ellipses on the bottom right corner and you'll see that we're able to convert this to a template now of course we'll be able to put this in a category so that it's easy to find in the future um, we can give it a description so folks know what the template's purpose is, click save, and then you'll notice the bottom banner, rather than being a light gray and saying open, will turn to a dark gray and say new, allowing us to create a new version from this template. Now at any point, we can easily come back to that ellipses and we can edit our template. We can also convert our template back to a document um, and make changes as well. All right, and last but not least, after Okta did all of this, they found they were closing many more deals. Their customers wanted copies of the documentation. And so um, sometimes their customers didn't have Lucidchart. So how do we share a document with folks that don't have Lucidchart? Very, very easy. All we'll do is come up to that big orange share button in the top right corner. Now Lucidchart was built to make sharing and collaboration so much easier for you. This is a great example. We'll go ahead and click advanced on the bottom left corner and navigate to publish where we'll have several options. Now keep in mind that all of these options are going to be auto updating, meaning as you make changes in Lucidchart, they will push to these links. So you don't have version and control issues and you can be sure your customers always have the most current version of the document. Now, um, several of these, everything with the exception of the area selection will be dynamic as well. Meaning if there are, are links or layers or um, any sort of interactivity that will persist. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the example of the area selection because it's unique and pretty cool here. So we're gonna go ahead and click publish selection and close out of our menu. And we are going to drag and drop just over the part we wanna share with our customer. Maybe we only want them to have access to this top half of our document. You'll see that it's highlighted in red now, so we know what is shared. We can come back to share. Um, we're gonna go into the same menu, so we're gonna click publish here. You'll see that link has been created. We can copy it here, or we can click this link to get an example of what that will look like for whoever we share it with. Now, as I mentioned before, it is auto-updating, so as we make changes here, they will or in the editor, they will push here. So we can go ahead and give that a try. We'll jump into the editor. We'll change this door um, to a red color here. We'll jump back into this link. We'll go ahead and refresh that. And we'll see that the door color will change to that orange color we selected.
once the internet loads, of course. All right, there you go. Okay, so that is primarily um, what Okta did to really help standardize their processes. They were able to create really great custom shapes that made it easy for their customers to understand what their solution was. They turned them into templates, so that way their team could all start from the same place. Um, and then they were able to share that with their customers in a very dynamic way that is continually up to date. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop for just a second before we jump into this next section. I'm gonna launch a quick poll question um, and get caught up on some of those questions in the Q&A. So I'll give you guys just a couple of minutes to answer this and I will um, get those questions answered. One of the questions is, is about shortcut keys. What I would recommend doing is looking up, so you'll go to the top of your screen to this help menu here and you'll see hotkey references. This will list all of the different keyboard shortcut, shortcuts that are in Lucidchart. So definitely look through those and see if they have the keyboard shortcuts you're looking for. So again, click on help and hotkey references and that will take you to that menu. Great question. Just to reiterate, yes, the recording will be available after the presentation. We will be sending it out in 48 hours to the email that you registered with. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and continue on. If I didn't get to your question yet, hang tight. There are some that I'm gonna be answering live and then I will also, here in just a minute, and I will also um, stop to answer questions again here soon. Um, also, please, if you put the questions in the chat, please move those over to the Q&A. Um, they tend to get lost in the chat as we get lots of different um, comments. All right, let's talk a little bit about Firefox. Now, what Firefox was doing was they were working really hard to um, build out a new user flow. And so what that consisted of was several different departments working together, including product and marketing. Um, and all these different departments have varying levels of detail that they need to know um, and different dependencies that they're responsible for. And so they needed Lucidchart because they needed a place where everybody had access to something. Um, it was always up to date to remove those versioning controls, um, had great clarity in the communication and where you can also have varying levels of detail. So let's go ahead and talk about how they did that in Lucidchart. Now, the first thing I want you to notice about their diagram is there are a lot of different types of colors here. And the colors and stylization really help to give more clarity to um, your processes. Now, something that I highly recommend doing is doing just what they did here. You can see they've created a um, legend that's a great thing to save as a custom shape to, um, to work from as you're stylizing your shapes. All right, now I'm gonna give you some advanced stylization tips as you're working on your diagrams. Tip number one is you can actually import a color palette. Um, whatever colors you like, you can search for them in the image search or bring one in from marketing, save it as that custom shape. And you can actually change colors of your shape based off a color palette. This is a really great way to make your diagrams look professional um, and add that additional level of branding. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select the shape we wanna change, we'll come up to our properties bar, go ahead and click our fill color, use that pin dropper, and we can change the colors of our shapes, no problem. So again, select your shape, come up to our color icon here. We're gonna use that pin dropper, go ahead and select the next color. Again, come up to our fill color, pin dropper, next color, and so on. Great way to just create um, a really aesthetically pleasing diagram. And of course, you can delete this whenever you are done or save it as a custom shape to use in the future. All right, my tip number two is gonna be talking a little bit about your text. We have a lot of text options in Lucidchart. You can actually come up to your properties bar here. Let's say you've got bullets, you can go ahead and add bullets here. You can change the alignment of your text. You can also change, of course, your text color um, and uh, make all those adjustments fairly easily in the properties bar here. Something that a lot of folks also really like is when you start getting processes that maybe have um, multiple departments merging, you can create um, what we call a linear um, 
stylization here. So we're going to click on our fill color. We'll go ahead and click on linear. You'll see we have several colors we can pick from. So I know that for this color, I'm going to use my pin dropper and I'm going to merge from this department. And then we'll go ahead and do the other department. This one, we're going to use the pin dropper and merge with maybe this department. Um, and you can see that they're merging here together um, on this shape. So a pretty cool stylization thing you can do. We also recommend rounding corners. It makes it a little bit more professional. Um, just one or two clicks is pretty easy by clicking on the shape option button here. All right. Now some tips for mass formatting. Once you have the formatting you like, like let's say we have our formatting here in our legend that we know we want to use for everything. Let's say we want to change all of our um, little triangle shapes all at the same time. Very easy and one of my favorite things, if you pay attention to nothing else, pay attention to this. Um, we'll go up to the select option in the upper left corner and we're going to select the shapes with the same shape type, meaning all of the triangles. And from there, we're able to go ahead and uh, change the fill color of all of those different triangles very, very easily. I'll show you again with these half circles. We'll select one, come up to the select option here, shapes with same, shape type, and we can go ahead and make adjustments to all of the half circles. Now you can change, um, I'll just have you note, you can change all of your shapes at the same time or all of the lines at the same time. So you've got several uh, mass formatting options uh, at your fingertips. All right, now the next thing that Firefox did is once they added the clarity with their stylization, they decided they wanted to link to supplemental resources that were parts of the process, so maybe to a Confluence page or a manual or Google Doc, and they also wanted to link to other sub-processes. They didn't want everything in one place that was just overwhelming. They wanted to break things up a little bit. So you'll see they built a sub-process on another page in the diagram, so that way the folks that are responsible for this part of the process are able to see what they need without overwhelming all of the stakeholders. So. All you'll do in Lucid Charts to make this um, dynamic is we'll select um, whatever shape we'd like to connect to. We're going to go ahead and navigate to the top right corner and click this little lightning bolt or our actions option. And you'll see several actions at the top of the screen here. Now, the first thing we want to do is connect this to our sub process. So we're going to select page. We're going to link to another page in the document. We're going to select sub process here. And we're able to now use that button to go back and forth between our sub process and our main process. Now, the other option you have is you can also link out to a web page. So you'll see here we've got lucidchart.com that's been added. And we can go ahead and click that, and it will take us to another page. You can link it to another lucidchart document if you'd like. Um, the choice is really up to you. All right. Now, I do want to point out that while you are in edit mode, you'll notice when we hover over a shape that is interactive, you'll see a little banner will appear that will let you know the keyboard shortcuts to access that being command, shift, click. Um, now, you will have to use those keyboard shortcuts to use the buttons when you're in edit mode, of course, so you're not jumping all over the place. But when you embed this in Confluence, if you share it as a view only link, a published link, if you present it, it will just be that simple one click, just like a website. Um, so very, very easy for you there. Which brings me to another quick tip for making things look interactive so folks who know that this is a button. I always recommend um, going up to that same shape options we used for creating that gradient. Um, and we're going to go ahead and click the shadow button. It, you'll notice shadow is grayed out. We're going to select that and turn on a shadow so it looks like a button. And last but not least, we're going to go to our search on the far left. We're going to search for an icon, um, and we're going to search for an interactive icon today. Um, so that way folks know that the shape is interactive. Another great thing to save as a custom shape if you're going to be creating a lot of interactive diagrams. All right. Now, um, the other step of this process is once everything was built out, they were able to have all of the resources in one place that they needed them. Bi-weekly, these departments were meeting together to talk about where they were at in the process of things. And so the really cool thing here is you can actually make Lucidchart um, into a presentation directly here. Very, very easy. That presentation I began with was built in Lucidchart, so there's a lot of cool functionality. Now, what I always recommend doing is selecting whatever you want to create a slide for and coming over to slides on the right and clicking the plus slide icon. Very easy there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of slides. Um, you, you'll see that if you just click plus slide, it's going to allow you to 
move and change the, the size of things. I prefer to select content first and then click plus slide, but you can do whatever you would like there. I'm going to go ahead and select one that has a link in it so we can see um, how that works. And you'll see that we're building out our slides here. Easy to drag and drop and remove those slides wherever you like them, no problem. All right, now when we click present, you'll notice that it's very easy to just navigate through our different slides. If there are links, those will work. Very cool interactive capability. Now I wanna blow your minds with the coolest part of this. You can actually direct the focus of slides so people are looking at something specifically. So let's say we really want everybody to look at this first step in our process. I'm going to go ahead and click that step, come over to my already existing slide, click the edit icon and highlight selected shapes. Now I'm going to repeat this process and select a shape, come to our next slide, highlight selected shapes and repeat the process one more time. And now you'll notice when we present this, Lucidchart is going to focus on just those shapes specifically, drawing your attention to exactly what you need to focus on. So really cool functionality there. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and stop for questions for a minute. So please go ahead and ask those and I'm going to um, end the poll. Thanks for your participation in that. Um, and we will continue on here in just a second. Alrighty, thanks for your patience. I'm gonna continue on. If I didn't get to your question yet, um, I will get to it um, at the end in the open Q&A. So don't worry, I will get to it shortly. Um, keep an eye out. One question I did wanna answer live was, how do you create another page for the sub process? At the bottom of your screen, you'll see this plus icon here. Just go ahead and click on that and that will create more pages in your document, no problem. All right, which brings us to our last example. We're gonna talk about Lucid. Now, Lucid is a very quick growing tech company. Um, we are actually hiring like 30 people a week, so we're growing super, super quickly. So there are a lot of processes that we have to automate. Now, Lucid Chart's got some really cool automation functionalities. I'm gonna navigate down to the import data button in the toolbox on the left, 
And I invite you all to look through these and see some different options um, that maybe grab your attention. So you can automate things like org charts. You can connect your process flow diagrams to data. You can um, automate your entity relationship diagrams, your SQL diagrams, your cloud architecture diagrams. You can actually, this is a cool one, you can type a list and imp import that as sticky notes and rearrange those when you're brainstorming. So many cool ideas. So I definitely recommend checking these out. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through a quick example so you can see what that looks like. Um, all the wizards will behave fairly similarly. So um, you'll see that you're going to be walked through step by step. Um, Lucidchart will ask you questions. You'll just navigate through those. Something to keep in mind is typically if you're importing from a Google Sheet, it will automatically update. If you are importing from an Excel file or a CSV, um, you'll just need to replace the data set. We'll go ahead and select our demo file here. And again, Lucidchart's making this super easy for me. I'm walking through step by step, answering the questions that are asked. Um, it's asking me how I identify an employee. So I'm going to just line up those columns fairly easily here. Again, just lining up these columns, no problem. And we'll go ahead and click next. And Lucidchart is going to do all of the heavy lifting and build my org chart for me. Um, so definitely check these out. I will send some resources to walk you guys through if you have more interest in going in depth on any of these. Um, but just to be aware of, there is really great automated functionality in Lucidchart. All right, now one of the other things that Lucid has done with Lucidchart is as we've been growing really quickly, we've needed to show in a very powerful way how many um, folks we are, we are hiring to make that really obvious for our management. So this is an example of our org chart. Um, you'll see that this is our team structure as it is today. Now we want a very powerful visual of this is what it is and this is what it will be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replicate a shape using that tip we talked about earlier. We're gonna hold down that alt option button and replicate the shape. I'm gonna change the text here um, on this shape and I'm gonna change the color as well. Um, just so it's very clear to us that this is a new higher shape. And I'm going to click Command X to save that shape to use in a future layer. All right, now we're going to go ahead and create a layer so we get that very powerful current state, future state um, visual. I'm again going to navigate to the dock on the right, go ahead and click that Layers option, and I'm going to build a new layer by clicking Plus Layer here. We're going to call this our New Hires. Double click to edit the text here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this onto my new layer. Now you'll know we're on a new layer because it's going to be grayed out. You'll see a title for your layer at the top. And I'm able to interact with this layer here very easily. Um, I can keep doing that alter option to replicate this shape, build out what our new team's going to look like. And you'll notice that the things on our new layer are very vibrant. Now you can interact with base layers if you like. So I could draw lines um, from one shape to another. If I would like to do that, um, you can make adjustments very easily there. And we're gonna go ahead and double click to get out of our layer. Now, something I wanna point out is you probably don't wanna see all of this when you come into Lucidchart. So we're gonna come over to our layers panel and we're going to hide that layer by clicking this little hide icon and click sync visibility. And that sync button is going to set the starting view of our document. Now we need an easy way to turn that layer on. So we're going to create a button just like we did with our process diagram a minute ago. We're going to go ahead and call this our new hires. And we're going to come up to that actions button in the top corner. And we're going to link to a layer this time. So you'll see you can toggle layers, which means turning them on and off. You can show them or hide them. I prefer to use toggling layers, makes my life a lot easier, um, gives me some more flexibility there. And now when I click that button, you'll see those new hires are going to turn on and off. Now, something that's really cool is you can also select things and right click, and you can either copy them to the new layer or you could move them entirely. So I could move this whole row to our new hire list. You'll see it there on our new hire list now. And now when I click that button, you'll see that row will disappear entirely. It exists on that layer now because I have moved it. Alrighty, now if any of you have questions about layers, please let me know. Um, so now you can see that this is how Lucidchart made it very easy for executives to get buy-in and see how many new folks were being hired on our team. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can see we've done with Lucidchart today. We've talked about custom shapes, we've talked about templates, we've talked about advanced styles and layers and importing data, lots and lots of different things. Um, go ahead and drop in the chat just a pulse check. I want to see where we're at on how many new things you learned today. Did you learn five new things? 
Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. I will stick around and answer questions for the next 15 minutes or so. And I'm also going to leave you guys with some more resources. So if you hang tight for just a couple of minutes, um, I will be showing you some cool resources here soon. Yay, it looks like we got a lot of five pluses. So I'm so happy to see that. Forty-two. I love that. Adam learned forty-two new things, so that's great. All right. While you're continuing to answer that poll, and I appreciate the feedback, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link for you. Um, this is something we only share with our uh, live training. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this here for you. Um, and go ahead and click on this link and I will walk you through all of um, the training resources that you'll have after today. All right, now this is our Lucid Chart Training Hub, how this will work. Um, this first section here will show you all of our different core courses. We went through this yesterday. If you came today, this is the course we talked about. You can go ahead and click on this, Becoming an Expert, and you will see a recorded copy of today's webinar. I saw some requests for the documents we used it. You can access those documents here just by clicking on it. These are all buttons, so all you do is click on it and it will take you to those documents. You'll see hand-picked tutorials, templates, videos, you name it. The other cool thing is, is if you're using Lucidchart for a job specifically, if you come to this persona option, you can see Lucidchart for specific roles. Um, so let's say you're using it for org charting. You can see all of our training material on org charting. Again, just click on that got it button and you'll see there's videos you can watch and tons of different resources. Um, that said, I will be here to answer questions. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you for all the wonderful feedback. Um, we love feedback and knowing how we're doing and we hope to see you soon.